what is health there's a definition by called alma a definition of health health is absence of this disease that disease all kinds of diseases if you analyze this it's a, just a business definition because if you want to know whether you're healthy or not you must go for a checkup and that's a big business because you are checking up the whole population of the world if you really can because if you are treating only the ill people it's only a few million on a given day so that's not the definition but indian system of ayurveda for thousands of years had a beautiful definition which simply means in a sense if you have enthusiasm to work enthusiasm to work mark my words and enthusiasm to be compassionate you are healthy you can have a disease because all of us have disease if i now scan all of us for a cancer cell each one of us will have more than 5 to 10 cancers already inside but they don't become clinical cancers and kill you they die themselves and this is a very important thing so on a given day nobody is totally healthy which if it means that without disease so this definition of health is very convenient because you can know yourself in the morning get up and ask do i want to go to work today or do i have to go to work if you say and i have to i want to go to work you're healthy do i have to be compassionate if you say yes i i have to be compassionate that's compulsion i want to be compassionate and if you want to be compassionate you're healthy again now having said this i must tell you the myths in the area of health when you go and see a doctor the first thing he asks is did your father have cancer did your father had stroke he had a heart attack you get frightened and if any one of these is positive you start dying that day i may get a cancer i may get con heart attack i may get this i may get a stroke all this is myth you and your parents have nothing in common because you are not come from your parents actually this is the indian thought children do not come belong to parents they come through parents but our ancestors are not our parents but the germs this world for the first 2000 billion years was run by only germs and every other planet is like that and these are the germs which are very compassionate and they donated a dna each to us to make the first nucleated cell called the zygote that you and i wear on the first day we were made in the mother's womb and that one cell has become a colony in you of 120 trillion cells in association with 1200 trillion germ cells so for every single cell of yours that's human cell you have 10 germ cells so we are germs and this germ theory propagated by the western medicine to use antibiotics as medicines is the one that is killing mankind all over the world because of super bugs now germs are our friends and germs have brought us here and we belong to them so you don't have to worry about your family history of this disease or that disease because there is a big myth going on saying that your genetic analysis your genome studies your genetic engineering stem cell study preserving your cord blood of your child preserving your dead body etc etc is a multi billion dollar industry all that is a myth what is true today is if you are healthy today you are lucky if you are unhealthy today you are lucky there's nothing that you can do to preserve your health or continue it but one thing is health is environmental health is not genetic you are not inherited from your parents health is purely environmental in this context we again talk of and we have been talking about the risk factors your heart disease your hypertension diabetes body weight height weight mass index your girth of the abdomen girth of your your uh, the, you know all kinds of things we talk about all this has been again proved wrong because a largest study the longest study and the biggest study which is called the mr fit study mr fit study multiple risk factor intervention trial which went on for prospectively you know, about 25 years showed that there isn't anything called risk factor even if you remove the risks by intervention the risk if anything remains so even if you whether remove the risk factor or not the risk remains but the only thing that can save you is change your lifestyle this is because lifestyle is the biggest environment what is the environment of the human body human body is in fact human mind only with quantum physics we have quantum and understanding matter is energy energy is matter for such a few who don't belong to the science stream i'll give you a nice article please read this matter is not made out of matter that's the article matter is not made out of matter written by a man who got the nobel prize and the alternate nobel prize because he called 
E is equal to M. Energy is matter, matter is energy, as A duality. And the man has written this article so for you. And in the article he writes, I quote, he says, I am just a scientist, like a child playing in the sands the sand time. But these Indian sages have called this Advaita thousands of years ago. And he says, that is the philosophy that runs quantum physics. And you are, your body is a holographic projection of your mind, which is called your consciousness. And the mind is not in the brain, as we think and we, as we practice in psychiatry. We give you drugs when you have some mental problems. These drugs go and affect the brain, where the mind is not there, and the brain gets damaged. So the drugs only damage the brain and do not treat you. As a matter of fact, create more problems. But what is important is, the mind is the environment of the body. I am repeating this. The mind is the environment of the body. So if you have to get any disease to the mind and to the body, it's again the mind that affects the whole thing. And if you want to get rid of it, you have to change your mind. So in short, mind your mind and that will mind your illness and wellness. Now what is the most important part of the mind? Your thinking. The most dangerous part of the environment of mind is arrogance, hubris. I, you know I, you all know I. I starts illness, illness. You just change that I into we, wellness. That's all the difference. Do you understand the difference between illness and wellness is how you look at yourself. If you think you are the biggest man under the sun, you are always ill. Remember that. Almost all our politicians have got all kinds of illnesses. You don't know them. They are, take so many drugs. Now you think there is a drug for everything, so why worry? One patient came to me once and said, look doctor, I want to drink, I want to smoke, but I don't want to get diseases. Give me a pill. This is how people think, because they think there is a pill for every ill. But the reality is, while there is no pill for every ill, there is an ill following every pill. And this is true because every pill is a reductionist chemical. And studies have shown when you take a pill, irrespective of what pill it is, from aspirin to the statins or whatever, it goes inside the system and the body's wisdom says, oh, this doesn't belong to me, I don't know, this is a poison, so it must be destroyed, it sends it to the liver. So every tablet that you take, every injection that you take, the drug chemical goes to the liver and damages the liver.